Rogers? Nearly finished, Mrs. Kieran. Good. Is it you, may I ask? We're Georgina's cousin. We've come to stay. Yeah. Just what Professor Keelan would want. Three more kids about the place interrupting his work. Lucky for you, he shut himself away on the island. He must have built that tower, then. Uh-huh. It's part of his experiment. Top secret it is, too. So don't you go blabbing to no strangers about it. Don't let me catch you in my vegetable patch. What does he think we are? Rabbits? Here you are. How lovely to see you. Oh, Frank. Oh. Well, you've certainly changed since I saw you last. I was still just a baby. Now, oh. you must be Julian, mm -hmm. and this is Dick. Did you have a good journey? Yes, super. Lovely ride from the station, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, good. And I've arranged with the station master to have your baggage sent out. So, bring your bikes round the back and we'll go straight into tea. I you must be very hungry. Yes, I hope you've got enough of those two, Aunt Fanny. Especially Anne. She nearly didn't make it from the station. Need building up, you know. Lovely afternoon, George. Lovely afternoon. It certainly is, Mr. Johnson. Did you have a good lunch, sir? Possible. Rather too much shop talk, you know. Ah, just in time for the office cuppa. Ah. Miss Peters, I'm leaving town for a couple of days. I'm sure the minister will be able to manage by himself until I get back. Have my car set round to the front, will you, please? Yes, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Tomorrow, we'll all go across to the island, have a picnic lunch with Uncle Quentin. Super! Where's Georgina, Aunt Fanny? We're dying to meet her. I don't quite know where she is. I'm afraid George has got a bad habit of disappearing off just when she shouldn't. Why do you call her George? Because she likes it. But that sounds like a boy. <laughs> That's just what she hopes. I wouldn't like people to think I was a boy. No, but then you're not very like George. There you are at last, George. Tea's nearly over. I'm not hungry, thank you, Mother. These are your cousins, Anne, Dick, and Julia. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. 
Why don't you take them all outside and show them a few places? But I've got to... Got to what? Nothing. Good. Off you go, then. I'll clear away. Thanks for the tea, Aunt Fanny. Yes, it was terrific. Oh, that's all right. Off you go. Don't be late back. Quite. Fanny said we can go to Uncle Quentin's Island tomorrow. That would be super, Georgina. My name is not Georgina, it's George. And the island isn't his, it's mine. Don't be silly. It's his. He gave it to me. And now he's working on it and he won't let me dare. But surely, if his experiment is so top secret, why is he doing it out there where everyone can reach him? Huh. You try it. The rocks out there would smash your boat to bits. Only Father and I know the way through them. And he needs those tides for his experiments. That's why he took my island. I wouldn't mind an island of my own. Look, I've got something to do, something very secret. So don't try and follow me, any of you. Oh, uh, we wouldn't bother. It's going to be a laugh a minute with her around. It's all right for you two. I've got to share a room with her. This is going to be a very long fortnight. Can I get you another? Oh, that's very kind of you. <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, bitter? Thanks. Timmy! Timmy! <whistles> Come on, Timmy! Come on! Kirin's girl, isn't it? Yes. A regular tomboy. Master George, I call her. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. That's a dog, too. The professor wouldn't have him in his house. Told her to give him away, but she dotes on that dog more than anything. And how is Quintin? I haven't seen him recently. Oh, he shut himself away on the island, experimenting. He doesn't come back over. The missus takes supplies out to him. She makes him signal to her to show he's all right. Shines a torch three times from his tower. 10.30, morning and evening, regular clockwork. Does she now? Well, I suppose he's working so hard. <laughs> Torches, Dopey. Well, let's go back and get them then. It's getting late. Why don't we come back and explore it tomorrow? Yes, we'd better leave it. Look, let's keep this our secret. George has got hers, and this cave could be ours, right? Right. <laughs> You're the children staying at Kirin Cottage, aren't you? That's right. George not with you? No. Nope. Your uncle and aunt are great friends of mine. Why don't you come and have tea here tomorrow? Ah, well, I'm not sure. Oh, it's not important whenever you're passing. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Funny bloke. This place is full of peculiar people. Aunt Fanny's the only normal one we've met so far. Uncle Quentin sounds a bit peculiar, too. Well, we'll find out when we go to Kieran Island tomorrow, won't we? 
that road, George? No, the rocks out there are too dangerous. You can cast off them. <laughs> Dear love, he usually appears if we call. George, take the boys and see if you can find him. Okay, come on. We'll get the picnic. Father! Father! Wow, what a fantastic place! Look at it! What do you think those things are up on the top of the tower? I don't know, it must be some kind of solar power supply system. I think the main equipment must be somewhere else. Father! Father! Well, I don't think he's up there. I wonder where he is. Here I am. So, Professor Kirin, your island seems to be attracting quite a lot of attention. You've grown since I saw you last. It was eight years ago, Uncle Quentin. Was it? Well, I suppose that's to be expected, isn't it? <laughs> Where about you working at the moment, love? In the cellars. Cellars? Beneath the ruins, the cellars of the old castle. Is that your secret laboratory? I suppose you could call it that, yes. George looking after you, all right? Yes, she rode us out here, round all those rocks. Mm. Wish I could row as well as that. George will teach you. <laughs> Look, I've got to get back. There's something I must check. Thanks for the supplies. George, you can have your island back soon. I've nearly finished. Don't forget the signals, eh? You know I worry. I won't. Take care of them, all right? Bye. Bye, bye, bye. 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 Well, well. How nice to see you again, Kurt. Chance. Been doing a spot of bird watching, have you? What a splendid telescope. Yes, it's, uh, it's very nice, isn't it? Tell me, who are you working for this time? Russia, China, America. You've been a bit of a nuisance to us in your time, Curtin. I do hope you appreciate that. Oh, no, I'm not working for anybody. Honestly, I'm not. Mm. <coughs> ah, what a lovely transmitter. This afternoon. It's my business. Oh, well then, you won't want to come exploring with us. Where? That's our secret. We'll be over the ridge at the end of the beach. If you change your mind, we'll find something rather interesting. George, come on! 
Are you there? Listen, Captain, what is wrong with I've no information for you. It's there, Captain. You're not dealing with them again. The monthly reports. Hello, Colonel Johnson. Johnson? How splendid to hear you again. I'm afraid your little scheme has run into rather a sticky patch. Bad luck. Oh, and by the way, you won't be hearing from Mr. Curtin again. It strikes me, Curtin, that you're in a spot of trouble. I think you and I ought to have a little chat. I don't think anyone's been here for ages. Can't see the end. It must go a long way. Come on. This isn't a cave. It's a man-made tunnel. It's very long. It stretches out under the sea. <gasps> What's that? It's a dog. Hello, boy. Don't know. Must belong to the man on the beach. George's boy. So that's her little secret. <laughs> Come on. Timmy, how many times have I told you not to chase rabbits? And just look at me when I tell you off. It's just not good enough. It's not on now. Come on. Just you remember that. Hello, George. Dick. And hello, Timmy. How did you know his name? You've just been shouting it. He gave us quite a fright in the tunnel. Oh, he's lovely, George. Is he yours? Yes. Then why didn't we see him at the cottage? Father won't let me keep him. A boy in the village has to look after him for me. I'd rather starve than get rid of Timmy. And besides, I hate being parted from him. So that's why you were being so miserable. Don't worry, George. You can rely on us. We won't reveal your secrets. You promise? We promise. On the head of Timmy. Friends? Friends! I don't mind telling you this, George. I hate to be your enemy. And another thing, George, that tunnel we found, no ordinary tunnel. We didn't go very far, but we found some steps. And going straight down into the earth. And heading out to sea. <gasps> Are you coming? You bet. Come on. Hello there. Are you coming to tea? We'd better go. Plus, I wonder what we found down here. Right. And I'm hungry anyway. OK, just coming. <laughs> Come along in. Make yourselves comfortable. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Bit of a mess at the moment, I'm afraid. Gosh, look at that telescope. Oh, yes, that's my hobby. Bird watching. Kieran Island. I can see Uncle Quentin's tower as clear as anything. Chuffs. And chuffs. Rare coast birds. I spotted a couple out on the island. I couldn't help seeing you out there, actually. How is your dear father? Well, uh, he's, he's nearly finished, he says. Oh, has he? Good old Quentin. Well, um, perhaps you could help me get the things out. Uh, this kiss and cake in that cupboard. I'll put the kettle on. Right. Not that one. The biscuits are on the shelf below. Oh, sorry. Help! The aunt! I mean, my aunt! Aunt Joan! She's coming to tea, remember? Do you know her? Oh, yes, indeed, a delightful lady. Well, we've got to go. I'm sorry. Yes, bye, and thanks. Oh, uh, yes, silly bus. Excuse us, please. Thanks, anyway. Bye. Uh, uh, an another time, perhaps. Who's Aunt Joan? We haven't got an Aunt Joan. Exactly, and that man said he knew her. He's pretending to be a friend of Father's. And I've never seen him before. You shouldn't have told him Father's nearly finished. You know it's secret. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. Aren't you jumping to conclusions a bit, George? I don't think she is. Did you happen to notice what was in that cupboard? A radio transmitter. <laughs> Well done, Kurt. Well, I'm sorry. I, I mean, they rushed off. I, I couldn't ask them anything. No, I heard all I needed to know. Professor Kirin has apparently nearly finished. Oh, cheer up, Curtin. You'll be busy tonight. All 
the same. I think we're getting too worked up. I mean, as long as Uncle Quentin signals. 10.30 coming up. That place, man, though, it'll pass right over the island. Has he signaled yet? Not yet, Mother. Any minute now. Four. One, two, three. It's all right, George, he's safe. He signals up, Fanny. Good. Right, off to bed, all of you. Phew, that's a relief. But I will be watching the tad through the binoculars tomorrow morning. Night. Good night. 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 Professor Kirin, I presume. Who are you? No, you don't know me. My name's Johnson. I'm from the Ministry of Research. Oh, thank heavens. For a minute, I thought you were some or sort Or rather, of... I should say I was from the Ministry. You see, I've recently decided to strike out on my own and seek my fortune. And I found it, Professor. I found it here. On Kirin Island. when there's exploring to do. I'm sure that tunnel we found in the quarry leads somewhere. We can explore it tomorrow. And with Timmy, we can help. Yes, I think that looks fine. Idiot, we promised to keep George's secret. Sorry, George. Sorry. It's OK. I think that man at the cottage knows about our tunnel. Why should he be interested? I don't know. It's just... I think he's up to something, but I don't know what. And another thing, how come he knows so much about Father's experiment? None of us told him anything, George. It did! He told him Father's nearly finished on the island. Look, I said I'm sorry! Hey, calm down, you two. Now, come on, George. That man's obviously got his source of information somewhere. It might all mean nothing, but we ought to find out what he's up to and why. Nearly 10.30. He'll be signalling any minute. I can't see a thing. There's rain on the tower windows. Can I have a look? I want to see Father. Sure. There he is. He's signalling. I think someone's out there with him. Who? I couldn't see. I only caught a glimpse of him. Are you sure it's not rain on the glass? No, no. It can be very deceptive. Terrible weather, Professor. I'm afraid I've only got emergency rations, the parachute jump, you know. Um, now, what can I offer you? Um, party maison, a little smoked cod row, and to follow, lamb cutlets. Not a thing. Oh, come, come, Professor, you must eat. And don't look so downcast. I'm only asking you to be reasonable. Reasonable? Quite. I mean, nobody's going to come here looking for you as long as you continue to make the signals. You can't escape. So it really would be more sensible of you to cooperate. You know I won't. My information is that you've completed work on this energy conversion plant. I assume, therefore, that you've perfected it. It's going to be worth millions of pounds on the open market, you know. It'll be free for anyone who wants it. 
Not if I hold the world patents. Over my dead body. Oh, really, Professor. I do hope it won't come to that. Yes? Mainland to island, are you receiving? Me? Yes, I'm receiving you. Go ahead. I found something very interesting. Go on. There's an old plan of the island. And there's an underground tunnel from the cellars to the mainland. And it services near the beach, near here. Does it? Good. I won't need a boat after all. There's one thing, though. I think the Kirin kids know about it. Oh, I don't think we need worry about a few children. By the way, our friend here is proving rather unhelpful, I'm afraid. Stand by for further instructions. I want to have time for a little think. And time, Professor Alas, is something I don't have very much of. I need to be a long way away from here, fairly swiftly. The sooner the better. It really was very clever of you to find a way of converting natural energy to stored power the tide, the sunshine, even the movement of the earth. It really is rather impressive. Now, of course, I'm no scientist, but it strikes me... Don't touch it! It strikes me that if the energy is converted, but has nowhere to store itself, what you're going to get is a lot of energy wandering around, not knowing what to do with itself. You'll blow up the island. Not for some time. The tide doesn't turn until late tonight. And after that, well, Professor, you all know what'll happen. Professor Killian, I want your notebook. And if you don't let me have it by tomorrow morning when I have to leave, your wife will receive a very spectacular signal. A tragic accident. And she will never see you or your island ever again. Ten thirty. And there it is. Can you see anything, George? No, it's too dark. If Uncle Quentin signaled, then it must be all right. Yes, yes, I suppose so. Oh, well, well, good night. Good night. Yeah, see you in the morning. Okay, night. rain on the glass. It can be very deceptive. Father's in danger, I know it. destroy my discovery, you'll never find my secret. I could always try. You could be a rich man, Professor. A very rich man indeed. Or a dead one. It's your choice. Come on, Timmy. Come on. Come on. Oh, calm down, Timmy. We've got work to do. boiling a saucepan of water. If the steam can't escape, the lid flies off. And if the lid can't fly off, bang goes your saucepan. Johnson, think what my discovery would mean for everyone. You mustn't destroy it.
rarely, so you think I mustn't destroy it, do you? Well, I can't very well leave it here for someone else to discover, now can I? That reminds me, I must go and take a few snaps of your tower. Do excuse me, I shan't be a moment. See the switch there on the left? First one. Turn it off, please. This one? Yes. Well done. Now hurry back into the tunnel. There's a crack in the wall on the right. My notebook is hidden there. Find it and get it out of here. But please, George, it's my only chance. Hurry. Kirin, are you sure I can't persuade you to cooperate? <laughs> now, they're bound to find you missing. I see the boat has gone. Yes. I think it'd be best if the boat wasn't on the island. They're hardly going to come here looking for you if they find your boat upside down floating out to sea, are they? Oh, do excuse me. Um, talk amongst yourselves. Father, it's all right. I found your notebook and gave it to Timmy. Who is Timmy? A friend. He came with me. don't make that much noise. Hey, what? Timmy! Hey, Timmy! What's that? Notes! Scientific notes! Look! That's the tower at Kirin. These must be Uncle Quentin's notes. We'd better get George. Come on, Timmy. Down, boy. Come on, Timmy. George? George! Where's George? I don't know. She must have gone to the island. Then why didn't she come back with Timmy? And why isn't he all wet? I don't know. But if there is someone on the island, and only Timmy came back, she must be in danger. Wherever she's gone, Timmy will find her. It's nearly dawn. Get dressed quickly and get your torch. Come on, Timmy.
somewhere. Yes, it goes right under the sea to the island. Come on, wait a minute. Whoever it is that's got George and Uncle Quentin must have come this way. In which case, he might have accomplices out here. We'd better get the police. But we must stop them from stealing Uncle Quentin's secret. You two go on, and I'll keep a look out this end of the tunnel. Right. Good luck. Stop right there, young lady. Now, what do you think you're up to, eh? Oh, no, you don't. Ah! Oh! Oh! Ah! <laughs> My ankle, I think I've broken it. Well, come on, help me, can't you? Well, come on, don't just stand there. You can't just leave me here. Oh, all right. Ah! Oh, it serves you right, you horrible man. I knew I shouldn't trust you. You can jolly well stay there until I get the police. for days. Where to now, Timmy? Mm. Oh, Quentin! Dick! Come on, I'll tie my feet. Two you. The first switch on the left. Turn it on. This one? Yep, yeah, that's right. Well done. Timmy found us here. Timmy? Who is Timmy? Uh, this is Timmy, our dog. A very good dog. The island can't blow up now. Come on, we must go up. Okay, Timmy will show us the way. George once had a dog like that. Cool, what a coincidence. <laughs> coincidence? I might have supposed that you were involved. <laughs> Dad, Kirin. If it hadn't been for Johnson into thing, I... Good old Anne, she's made it! Oh, well, over there, take him. Quentin, darling. George, Good to see you safe, Professor Kirin. Oh, I'm so worried about me, <laughs> man. Now watch it, fellas. Watch it, fellas. My ankle might be broken up. Watch it. You just steady, steady. Now just take it steady, will you? Professor, we've landed a helicopter on the island, but there's no sign of anybody. Hmm. Then he must have followed us down the tunnel. The bloke's name is Johnson. By the way, he's armed. He must have got lost. Timmy will find him. Yes, all right, young lady. It's worth a try. I'll give him... Five minutes. After that, I'll have to send my men in. All right, come on, move out for you. All of you. All right. Go on, Timmy, bring him out. Come on, Cover Timmy. the entrance. Remember, he's armed. Damn it, where have they gone? Get 
back, you dirty brute. Is that it? I'll have a gun, sir. Take it, boy. Well, George, have you forgiven us? Forgiven you? You saved everything. I don't know about you, George, but I think we five make a pretty good team. When the papers get to hear about this, a pretty famous team. The famous five. <laughs> That's a fine dog you've got there. Yes, he's the best in the world. Say, Georgina, isn't that the dog I forbade you to keep? Yes, Father. If it hadn't been for Timmy, Uncle Quentin, we'd have never have found you. And he saved your notebook. Please, Father, let me keep him now, please. Quentin. Well, considering that he saved my life. Timmy. Welcome to the family. Oh. <laughs> and Timmy, welcome to the famous five. <laughs> <laughs>